There is not much more exciting to me than this. And I'm gonna show you why. Me plastering your own home. It's literally spreading a sticky lime sand, sand mixture on your walls with a trowel. You're getting a breathable, fireproof skin that's like armor. So if you shake it a little bit, it makes it stick. Same thing on your trowel. You shake it a little bit, it makes it stick long enough to get it on there. Now, if I just pick it up, it's going to fall right off. Shake it a little bit, it's going to stick. It's going to be like a suction cup. What's up everybody, I'm Logan and this is Heirloom Builders. Welcome back to the second round of Lime Plaster. We're gonna go over this first scratch coat with a filler coat, a flattening coat. We're gonna be able to fill in all of these cracks from where that first coat really um, bonded to the earthen plaster. The earthen plaster sucked a lot of that moisture out of the out of the lime plaster and we're left with some pretty heavy cracking but as you can see a very strong bond so there's no need to worry too much about the cracking we're going to be able to go thinner and thinner coats um, as we finish off this lime plaster on this north wall and and the thinner coats are going to shrink and and crack much less uh, and if we do continue to have problems with cracking, um, we're going to add more sand. More sand and less lime is going to reduce the amount of cracking that we see. So if we need to add more sand, we can do that. I don't think we're going to need to. I think we're going to we're going to stick to the one part lime putty to three parts sand mixture to make this work. And that's what we've been doing in the past, and it's worked out really well. Um, as you can see, I filled a couple of the spots that, um, if you saw our last video, you know that we had a little bit of issues with some bonding over top of, uh, the burlap and some spots where it was super thick. And so, uh, Murray actually helped me fill in these spots one two and that's the only issues that we had so far so we've went ahead and filled those so that we don't end up having a really thick coat over top of those bare spots that were there before um, but today i'm actually going to wear the head cam so that you can see what i'm doing and how i'm doing because if i put a time lapse on this you're not really going to see much um, because we're going line over line it's going to be hard to tell really what we're doing so i'm going to wear a head cam so that you can see how we mix up plaster the consistency that we get and how we apply it with a trowel we're going to be mostly using a trowel and what i call a hawk which is basically an artist's palette um, that you hold in your hand and you use a trowel to uh, kind of mix up the plaster on that hawk and apply it to the wall. So the second coat should go fairly easy. I'm really excited to get this done. I've really got a couple of small sections of this north wall and I'm hoping it's gonna go pretty fast, but we'll see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take lime putty, out of this barrel right here as as you can see we have a white 55 gallon barrel covered with a half blue barrel to keep the moisture from evaporating out of what is the mixed up lime putty so we take bags of this hydraulic lime this is building lime this is hydraulic lime um, a lot of masons use this to make their mortar sticky um, cement mortars alone tend to be a little wet and they don't stick as well as if you put lime with them. That's a traditional way to do it. Most guys don't do that anymore, but some guys do. Um, this is the only lime that we can get that's locally available. It's manufactured, I think, in Alabama. 
um, which is why it's called Southern Lime. It is a Type S hydrated lime. Now, if you're researching what kind of limes to use, um, you're going to see a lot of debate and a lot of haters out there talking trash about hydrated lime and how it just doesn't bond and how it doesn't hold up over time. Uh, they prefer, a lot of people, especially in Europe, prefer to use uh, what's called a hydraulic lime. And that is uh, certainly a stronger lime. Um, it's more like cement. <clears throat> Um, and I'm not exactly sure, I'm not going to go into um, <clears throat> exactly how that's made and the differences there, but what I will tell you is that um, there's a few natural builders in my area, myself and uh, Greg Allen, Mud Dauber School, uh, and we are both sold on this lime product from, um, it's a Magnolia Type S building lime, it's a hydrated lime, and as you can see, You know, I've used this product all over my house. This stuff okay, is hard so to work. I've, I mean, it is noticed that some of these spots uh, where we're joining are not super bonded, so I'm kind of chipping for them off and for plastering. So some of this stuff is really um, good, though. There this we stuff go. Is about twenty dollars for a fifty-pound bag, so it's fairly cheap. Uh, You're gonna pay about plastering. twenty dollars for a twenty-five. 50, I'm sorry, $50 for a 25 pound bag of hydraulic lime. So you're paying like four times as much for the hydraulic lime. It's definitely a better product. I've used it on a hempcrete house that we built oh, it's just two so years back. It's, it's definitely a good product. It doesn't crack. Um, Burlap. And it's a really strong junk, man. So, Never use that stuff you know, again. If you, if you don't have man. a very high budget, I would recommend using this hydraulic or hydrated or how lime. Sustainable it's a perfectly it is, adequate but... solution to make lime putty, um, to add to sand, to make it's not real lath. Um, if you do have a pretty good effective. budget, or if you're building for someone else and you don't want to have to deal um, so much with callbacks, or if you just if you if you have a big budget, I guess, and you just want to have right. a product, yeah, you know, wetting it down. Fifty years, hydraulic lime is a good way to go. You just better make sure that you've got that lime. <clears throat> I want this to so, gradually, American lime tech up in you know, absorb this product, water. Uh, hydraulic lime. Um, you know, we're not just doing one quick. But I'm not going to go into details on drenching. Right now, um, I just wanted to want it, tell you the difference. We want it to and, soak in. Um, just kind of and me more than just like surface the wet. There. They're going to talk trash about hydrated lime. It's a really so we're going to do like two or three. That's the um, second wet down. So what we do in a nutshell. And now I'm going to go ahead and mix up plaster, some plaster. Is we mix one part lime putty to three parts mortar sand. Um, now that's not just any sand. We use a mortar sand. And what that looks like is this mortar sand typically has a lot of clay in it um which is gloves are a really important part of this because process it's because lime it's probably gonna lime plaster will really because it's got a lot of clay in it um, it's gonna dry out your skin it's gonna, um, like bonds to like so the clay in there is going to help adhere to the earthen plaster beneath going over top of a slip coat like we did on the floor. Okay. Um, this is also going to give it a little bit of color too. If this was just regular sand. Um, Let's see this the lime putty this water a whole settled on top. So what you end up with and is Let's see. Let's use the Lowe's bucket. A little bit of color. Let me see if I can get the right lighting here. <clears throat> so you can see and I actually mixed in some clay to our first coat Probably so that it would bond have a separate um, shovel for lime putty. You can see the difference, difference in color when you add a little bit of clay in there. And it cures if you don't have any, um, if you don't add any additional clay, it's going to be a whole lot whiter. But it's not a stark white, this is a really, uh, it's an attractive off white. You can see the difference there. If you add more clay, you're gonna end up with a little bit of color. Um, if you just have lime putty and hey, boop, boop. washed bleached sand, it's gonna be stark white. I really like this one, it's a really nice look. Um, you can see how different that is wall to wall. 
that's what the little clay added right there to where we repaired this section. So, so we're gonna like mix. Said, we're gonna do. We're gonna mix um, this blue there right here uh, with a paddle mixer, which is a half inch. A little bit of water on the eight, bottom. Um, you want a really powerful drill to, to mix yeah, your plaster started. because the plaster is really thick and if you don't use a strong yeah, drill you're going to burn up the motor. Like forget about even using a cordless drill with a paddle mixer. Um, it's just going to wear the motor out and burn it up. Um, so you need a high power. The uh, walking is a really good drill, a whole hog. Um, and then we've got this other high torque one that we've been using lately. Um, I'll see if I can give you some details on that. Um, but you want a high power drill and a tile or mortar mixing paddle to mix up. So we're going to mix in this blue barrel right now that we've got covering up. And let's get this so party like, started. Um, it's really nice to have a barrel with a flat Ooh. bottom, or as flat as you can get it, so that you're not tearing up your paddle, you're not jerking yourself around as you mix. If you have ridges and, and bumps and bung holes on the bottom of a barrel, then it's going to be really hard to mix and get everything mixed up at the bottom of the barrel. So the flatter you can get it, the better. But you also want, I use these um, old, I use these hydrated uh, lime when you add uh, primarily water. Because they are super thick. If you use just a five gallon bucket like ends that up looking to mix in, like you're gonna tear those things up. They're gonna crack and fall apart. And um, you know, if you're when doing it's a small batch, go. it's fine. But this stuff, need apparently, you don't to need to slake. But I like to mix it, uh, let's see, at least three or four days before I intend to use it. Um, and it can sit, as long as it's covered and doesn't dry out, it can sit for weeks. See how wet this stuff is. Okay, that's about how thick I'm going. I'm gonna try to keep this stuff covered in water. So I'm gonna show you that's about what um, the way that we do it is that instead of mixing uh, a one part to three part. Um, lime putty to sand with just a shovel as our um, kind of our rationing device. We're going to actually use five gallon buckets because um, White bucket. a heap, a heaping shovel full of sand is not a heaping shovel full of lime. You pull out a heaping sand. shovel full of lime and it's like almost two shovels full of sand. So we want to really get it calibrated. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one five gallon bucket of lime to three five gallon buckets of sand that we get our three to one ratio really well calibrated um, now another thing i'm going to say is that we use a uh, hey i'm going to go grab the hose and you want to use clean water when you're mixing plaster and um we've got rain water here um that we use in the house and so i'm just pumping that out of the cistern over here and into our barrel now you'll you'll notice that there's water that's settled on the top of this lime puppy. so one so bucket some water in this of place. lime um, and three key, buckets of sand the roof is covering this pile of sand um, if you just leave your sand out um, in the open then it's good to cover it with a tarp because it's hard to control like if you have a rainstorm um, you know, your, your pile of sand that you're pulling from is going to be really wet. It's going to be hard to kind of understand how much water you need to add to it. So it's better to keep things kind of dry and then um, you'll know how much more. It's easier to add more water than try to take it away. So, um, um, especially, so, <clears throat> so, let's see, we're doing one bucket of lime. I'm going to um, add that first to the barrel. Usually I put a little bit of water in the bottom to keep the dry stuff from just sticking on the bottom. So if there's water on the bottom, that's gonna that's gonna mix in versus um, now I'm gonna save the cleanest sand in the blue barrel. Not be scraping the bottom. Sand, and then water on top. 
on the uh, final coat. It's going to be hard to mix up the stuff on the bottom. So a lot of times I'll add the water first, then the lime, and then the sand. Um, okay. And it just tends to be mixing evenly without the stuff. That is a lot. So I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be running a head cancer. I'm going to be showing you kind of first person perspective. So probably should have added a lot more water. And the consistency that we're bottom. really looking for. And ultimately, if you can get a good idea, I'm usually looking for how much, how dry your sand um, is, consistency, your, your putty. Wetness you might be able to like determine. Coat, I think I mentioned in the last you know, video, half of that, that five gallon bucket going a little bit is what you need I wanted because of water, um, and you can calibrate it and and just go. Well, just kind of give. I'm gonna. I'm working this all around. Plaster. So, um, we went a little bit too dry. The, the first coat is going to really, you want that to be um, borderline sloppy. Um, kind of like a Slurpee, if you know what that is, or um, pancake batter. Um, you know, a little bit wet. Wait a bit more water. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be hard to hold it on a trowel, so you have to, you know, you have to be careful with it. The second coat should be a little bit drier. The third coat should be, um, you know, should hold its form on its own with like very little slump. It's going to, it's, it's not going to slump at all or ooze anywhere. Um, you don't want it, you don't want that third final coat to have a lot of moisture because the more moisture that you have that has to dry out, the more it's going to shrink and the more it's going to develop cracks. And that's not what you want on the final coat. It's okay to have some cracking on the first and second coat because you're going to cover it up. And actually that helps kind of give places for that those future coats to key into, to bond to, and to give it a little bit of texture. But on that final coat, you want something that is crack-free. You don't want water getting into any cracks on the surface on your final coat. So that final coat should be a little bit more dry. So today is our second coat. It's going to be kind of a medium consistency. It's going to be not quite like toothpaste, which I would want the final coat to be, but somewhere in between pancake batter and toothpaste. It's going to be a little bit runny, but it's going to be thick and easy to work with. You can see in here, there's still, you know, bits of clumps of sand so that haven't been mixed in. This consistency right here is a little bit drier than toothpaste. So this is still too dry, I think, for the final coat. But it's getting close to what I would want for a final coat. Now you want to kind of creep up on it because it can get sloppy really fast. This stuff is so thick that the paddle mixer can hold itself up. That's coming off like, this is still too thick for a final coat. I, I would use it. It's got not too much water in there. Um, it's really easy to work with when it's drier. Um, but that might still be a little too dry. Um, and so like the first coat, we are going to, we're gonna, I'm gonna grab the hose and we're gonna wet the plaster down. Because right now, it's been a couple weeks and it has fully cured. And it is really dry and it's going to suck up a lot of moisture. And so that is why I'm going to make this coat a little bit wetter. That's why I'm going to make this, this line plaster makes it a little bit wetter. This is stuff, this is the final coat on the west wall. And 
it is pretty dry. Uh, and the stuff that I put in on the other side, so our first coat over the slip is really dry. So we're gonna wet it down a bunch of times and make sure that it's it's not gonna pull an excessive amount of moisture out of the plaster. Now, to me, this is a really nice consistency for a final coat. I'm gonna add a little bit more water and that should be good. Um, and you'll also see me not only wetting it down before we add plaster, but also after we get the plaster down because it's really important to, to get a nice, slow cure to this plaster. Uh, the slower it cures, the slower it dries, the better chemical reaction we're gonna get, the better bond it's gonna have, the longer it's gonna last. So, let's do it. That's not gonna be good for your eyes. This could be actually the perfect final coat too. But um, I like it. I think a little drier the better. Less cracking. Especially if we keep our plaster base that we're going to dry or wet. We don't want it to pull too much moisture So this is the third time I'm spraying this right now. You can see it hasn't totally dried out, but it's still sucking it up. So to me, I love to use a trowel and a hawk. So this trowel is a pool trowel. I like the rounded edge because I still have a lot of control. Um, the square edge tends to do a lot of damage. It's good to get into corners, um, but there's very few corners that I have to deal with. So um, at this point, I'm just gonna use a, a square trowel for getting up in the corners just when I need it for right now I'm gonna get I'm gonna go for big coverage and what I'm trying to do on this second coat is flatten it out you can see where we have a lot of spots it looks like I still need to cut this out um, little undulations in the wall that we need to flatten and the bigger trowel that you have the flat One thing I like about this rounded pool shovel, pool trowel, is I can scoop out of a bucket really easily. This 
So right now, I'm just trying to get this stuff up on the wall. And it's nice to be able to sling it and then come back and flatten it. So the key is to try to not be sloppy. Okay, so if you shake it a little bit, it makes it stick. Same thing on your trowel. You shake it a little bit, it makes it stick long enough to get it on there. Now, if I just pick it up, it's going to fall right off. You shake it a little bit, it's going to stick. It's going to be like a suction cup. So that's exactly what I want to do. As I put this stuff on, sometimes shaking it a little bit like that really helps it stick. Again, I, with this coat, I'm not I'm not trying to cover every square inch necessarily because I know I need to finish up to here. And that's going to be the perfect fill in the end. So I'm just trying to fill in some of these low spots. Really push that stuff on the wall and into the grooves that we made with that scratch coat. a mess doing this so if you're worried about what you're making a mess on mask it off I should be worried about this but I'm not flattening that out right there Call this a straightening coat and that's what we're doing we're straightening the walls out Ooh, how's it going? good so far it flattening it out huh got it started yeah Straight. okay i'm making them some tea is amelia feeling all right it's hard to know she's just hanging with her brother right 
in solidarity. Yes. <laughs> Honestly.
sure to get enough plaster in here that we don't have too thick um, of a space to fill when we go for our final coat. But I'm gonna go right up to the edge right here. So I'm gonna leave uh, like an eighth of an inch. see I'm, I'm using a lot of different pressure I'll you know rotate my hand from here to knuckles almost up when I'm doing different things so you might be grabbing here to get a lot of pressure on the nose and you can see the heel of this the back end of this is always up and out because I'm just putting pressure right here where where I want it I want a lot of pressure right there on that front edge to push it in. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill. And flatten. Fill and flatten is the name of the game. And now I know I'm going to be using this part of the trowel to come out. So I'm going to load this part of the trowel. And I'm going to shake it on because it's going to want to fall off if I don't. Get it really suctioned up. You're working outwards. I'm going to come back and get that edge right where I want it. Fill up these little sections. It's okay if it's not perfect. This is the second coat. It's gonna get covered. It's gonna get scratched. But what I'm trying to do is flatten. Fill. Fill and flatten. I'm gonna smear it off so I have a wide section. And actually, I want the majority of my material to be on the lower side. I don't need as much up top, so I'm loading that and sticking it right there and working it in and flattening it out there we go that's good enough for the second coat now before this stuff see this is good this is good that i wet it down a couple times because if you don't that would already be dry and it would already be leather hard and I wouldn't be able to come back and scratch it. So um, you'll notice that now I've been in here for 15 minutes and this is still wet. That's good. That's what I want. I want a slow cure. I don't want to be working so fast. I don't want to, I don't want to have to work so fast that I can't keep up with how fast this stuff is drying. So it's good to wet down the wall. I can come back and work this stuff. So, fill and flatten. It's the name of the game. On the straight bank. It'd be nice to have a flat plank to work on, but this thing is rounded. It's been sitting in the grass. Wet. Okay, I like that.
So I'm going to keep on getting this, doing exactly the same techniques that I showed you here, filling and flattening, really pushing that plaster into the wall to get a nice bond, flattening out the big empty spots that were there before, strengthening up anything that feels like it's weak so that, that when that final coat goes on, it's going on to a really solid base and that's it. So I'm going to keep on moving and I hope you got something out of this video. So smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, peace out. times when I'm plastering I use the just the nose of this trowel because it can really get a lot of force and I can kind of smack it on the wall and that smacking impactful force is really gonna what's gonna flatten it out and it's gonna make it like a suction cup to stick to the wall um, like that and then with the long edge of the trowel I can come back and flatten it but I wouldn't necessarily want to load up this whole side of the trowel and hit a dry spot. Um, one, because a lot of it's going to fall off. I just can't get the pressure I need on it to get a good um, bond. So a lot of times I'll just kind of work this stuff in there, especially in some of these cracks that developed. do need to hit an edge, um, I'm going to wait, I'm going to make sure to shake this so it doesn't come off, load up just the side, press it where I need it, kind of shake it out. And shaking is really going to make it suck up. So I'm slicing in peeling off to get just what I need, not too much. I don't want a whole bunch on there because it's going to it's gonna explode out too much. But I can get it right in there, push until I'm about where I want it, and then just start shaking it out. Cut. Apply. Now I've got a big divot here. that in and come back and push this in, recess it so I have a little bit of room for that final coat, flatten everything out. Might have come out a little too far right there. 
That's all right. Okay, I'm gonna reiterate this because I think it's really important to know and think about. Um, when you're plastering, you really wanna try to find days that are not super windy uh, or sunny. Um, so if you're working on a south wall and you get a lot of sun on the south wall, um, you need to do that like first thing in the morning or like really towards the end of the day because you don't want a lot of direct sunshine on the wall. That's gonna really, um, dry the wall out too fast and you're gonna have to come back and spray it constantly to keep it from drying out too fast. Um, this north wall is gonna be a lot easier for us because we have um, shade all day long every day on the north wall. Um, it's starting to get it's starting to get really windy so it's kind of having to come back. wet the wall even though it's on the north side we don't want it to dry out too fast and this is going to be good to do a few times after you plaster not just before you plaster but even during you can see how much that's soaking it up um, and it's okay to get the plaster a little wet on the surface how much it's soaking it up. That wind is just an insane drying potential. Um, and out here, we're in the middle of a pasture. So we have lots of sun and lots of wind as drying potential for our straw bale walls. And that's why straw bale with earthen and clay plaster works for us. Uh, you wouldn't want to build a house like this in the middle of the woods because it's not going to have as much sun and access to wind for drying. So. Um, you gotta be careful where you build stuff like this. This is, this is about the consistency I like for a second and third coat. So um, we 
now typically like to add molding on the corners um, to provide a caulk joint and a place to stop our plaster um, so that we don't have to try to wrap the corners like I'm doing right now. But um, if you do like I did when I built this house, you can see how when you I did this wall first and then came back and finished this wall. And when you finish that wall, you can see it's really difficult to finish around a corner because you don't have a place to stop. So what I probably should have done here is wipe this down with a sponge to feather out and smooth out that sandy texture, but it's really difficult either way. So what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna show you how to load up the corner. Um, so you can get a nice finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all of this area, leaving a little bit of room, pushing that in there, still leaving just a little bit of, of room for my final coat, hopefully to go flush. up see how I smack it on there it really makes it stick and I'm gonna come back and punch this and I'm gonna I'm gonna load it up kind of from both sides I'm going I'm going thick I want to leave a big fat bead right there and I'm gonna come back Smooth that, and then I'm gonna add some in right there. And then I'm gonna just kind of take the edge, and you gotta kind of work it up in a smooth direction. And then I'm gonna come back here, and if you want it rounded, you can go ahead and round it, but you wanna be kind of moving off. Um, otherwise, you're just gonna peel the whole corner. So, suppose I could get a nice chiseled edge but straight straight corners that are really square um, are gonna break off and I don't want that so typically what I do is I just I'm gonna try to work this in there first before I build this corner so you can see that crack that developed after that first coat kind of working both sides Spaces around as much as I can so that when I come back with the trowel um, to make this corner, I'm done. You know, I have to come back and work it again because overworking is going to result in the plaster falling off. All right, so I got a pretty good amount there. Build it up a little bit more, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of so you can see how I'm moving up and away. And I've got the trowel at about a 30 degree angle, and I'm gonna try to push that, fill that space. I'm probably gonna need to come back here, Oops. build that out a little bit. Oops, man, I'm getting sloppy here on camera back up no big deal and then just kind of work it from both from both sides that is what I like to do for a corner that we are not putting molding and then I'm gonna come back and scratch it up 
to receive that final coat. Ugh. You can see how this stuff is like, even though I just sprayed it down, it's, it's kind of dry already. Let me take the time to work this plaster. And let's see. Let me scoop this up. Let me shake it. As you can see when you shake it, it really, really gets it in there. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Final coat's only gonna be a sixteenth of an inch. Not much. You shake it in there. All right, well that's it. Um, I'm gonna keep on working down this wall, and I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, if so, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And I uh, hope to see you on the next one. Until then, peace out. Three coats of armor, lime plaster on the straw bale house is going to make it bomb proof. Well, not exactly bomb proof, but hurricane proof. <laughs>